So uh, last year, the folks at MIT Lincoln Labs uh, put together a short course on radar, and it was the coffee can radar that was featured on like Hackaday and, and Make. And uh, anyway, when it came out, I got excited, so I built uh, the system up. But then I never really documented anything I did uh, with the system, so I thought I'd uh, start doing that. Um, and to get going, I thought I would take a step back from the actual radar and just talk about uh, measuring antenna performance. Um, if you don't have a network analyzer, it's kind of hard to measure uh, uh, your antennas and make sure that they're matched to 50 ohms. And so what I've done is I've built a simple uh, reflectometer that lets me uh, get a rough idea of, of how well my antenna is matched to 50 ohms. So um, this is the system. So this is the VCO that's in the coffee can radar, and it goes from 2.3 to 2.5 gigahertz, and uh, it's tuned with a 5-volt signal, and it runs off 5 volts. Uh, we go through a, a minus 3 dB or a 3 dB attenuator. So this basically cuts the power in half. And then we go into an amplifier that has about 14 dB of gain. And this attenuator is here to make sure that we don't exceed the maximum output power because you, you can't just have 14 dB of gain on, on any input power. Um, so anyway, you end up with about 16 or 17 dBm at this point. So um, this part is not part of the standard coffee can radar kit. It's a 10 dB coupler, and I got this off of eBay. And so what happens is, is the power goes out of this port, and any reflected power, uh, 10 dB down, so minus 10 dB of that, is coupled into this port. And then I have an additional 20 dB of attenuation. So what I have here is 30 dB down from the reflected power coming back this way. And then this part is also not part of the uh, standard coffee can radar kit. This is uh, a mini circuits power detector and it puts out a voltage that's proportional to the uh, power coming into the, uh, the circuit. And it goes over about 70 dB uh, range. So, uh, you know, it gives you a wide range of power measurement. So anyway, um, what we can do is we can put our antenna that we want to test here and we can measure the reflected power, and then we can trim our antenna to minimize that reflected power to make sure we have a good match to our system. And, you know, you can use this type of setup to uh, trim antennas for, you know, uh, uh, receiving Wi-Fi or ham radio or, or, or whatever. And it's, it's easier to put together than a network analyzer. It's certainly uh, cheaper than a network analyzer. So to get started, what we'll do is we'll put a, a 50-ohm terminator in place of an antenna and we should see almost no uh, reflected power in this case because this should present an almost ideal match to the outgoing power and it should all be absorbed uh, by the resistor in here. So we can look at the scope and, and see what we get. So this triangle wave is the uh, input to the VCO and lets us sweep across the, the frequency band of the transmitter and the green line is, is a voltage that's proportional to the reflected power. So, and it's about 1.6 volts, so that turns out to be about uh, minus 40 dBm. So, but there's 30 dB of attenuation here, so it's, it's minus 10 dBm. And this thing is putting out about 16 dB, so we're like 26 dB below the forward power. So, basically, uh, it's all going into the, uh, the 50 ohm terminator. So this is the uh, calibration curve of the uh, mini circuits power detector. So, about a 2 volt range gives you uh, a 70 dB uh, range of power measurements. So here's the uh, first antenna, and this one's built to the uh, dimensions in the, in the documentation. And if we look here, this is what we get. So over one ramp, and it's of course it's symmetrical, uh, what we get is we get a voltage between 1 and 1.4 volts. So at its lowest, we have a uh, reflected power of about minus 25 dB at the detector, and that's before we take into the 30 dB between the reflected and the, the power detector, uh, to about 1.4. So it works out that this one is fine, it, it, and uh, it, it's matched well enough. It's interesting that there's this weird... Uh, sort of resonance in the antenna that occurs uh, somewhere in here. And of course you can move that around a little bit by trimming the uh, stub inside the antenna. And you know, this is not really the right way 
to measure the antenna properties because it's affected by reflections in in the basement here and uh, you know uh, people who are pros do this in anechoic chambers or at least point the antenna out into free space and not at the ceiling but anyway this is good enough to get an idea that your antenna is, is tuned up properly okay this antenna I've purposefully cut the uh, the radiator inside the can a little long so we can actually try to tune it so here's what we get and this one's not as good you can see that it goes from about one volt to 1.3 and, and higher is better that means less reflected power so I'm gonna go in and just cut off a little bit of the antenna and see if I can improve the match oh wow so it got quite a bit better let me reduce that And uh, so, you know, it's funny because now the uh, performance of the antenna is not uniform across the, the band you want to transmit on, but this one I think actually has a better match than, than the other antenna. Let me take off a little bit more and see what happens. Oh, it settled right in there. So now we're about the same as we were before. So uh, I'll do one more snip and then I'm going to stop before I make things worse. Oh, I made it worse. Oh well. So anyway, uh, that's how you can tune uh, microwave antennas without a uh, network analyzer. So, alright, I'll put some more videos up uh, with the radar eventually.